Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're in the book of Exodus, and we're in chapter 8, and today we're at verses 16 to 19. Plague number one has fallen. Plague number two has fallen. Pharaoh didn't relent. Pharaoh didn't relent. The magicians duplicated or appeared to duplicate. Then on plague two, the magicians again appeared to duplicate, whatever happened there. And now we're on plague three. Let's read it out. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth that it may become gnats through all the land of Egypt. They did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats through all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried with their secret arts to bring forth gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had said. So the third plague is simply inflicted. There's no dithering back and forth with Pharaoh. I guess last time on the second plague, you know, he sort of reneged on the deal. So no surprise here. Boom, here comes the gnats. He hasn't let God's people go. Now, there's questions, and you'll see different things in different Bible translations, because there's question about the word here. Are these gnats? Are these mosquitoes? Are these lice? Are they some kind of mite? What are they? And there's only words only used just a few times in the Bible here, and so it's not absolutely certain what, what kind it is. But it's, it, since the plagues are escalating, this has got, got to be something worse than having frogs underfoot everywhere. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what, what, what they are. Maybe they are Alaska-sized mosquitoes. I don't know that. But anyway, it's uh, definitely um, highly dis disruptive. The key point here is, is that the magicians are not able, even to, even to uh, under appearance, uh, duplicate this. They're not even able to fake it. And they report to Pharaoh, they are convinced, not converted, mind you, but they're convinced, this is the finger of God. You or our Pharaoh are up against uh, something that is beyond all of us, and kind of hint, hint, Pharaoh, it's beyond you. You know, Pharaoh, you should really take into account you're up against actually God himself, and we are all outnumbered here. You are outmatched. They didn't say it, I'm sure, in just such words, but they're sort of sort of strongly encouraging Pharaoh to think about that. They, they have been taken out. Uh, yeah, this can't be duplicated. So this is just the third in the, there's a triad here of three triads of plagues and then topped off by the tenth plague. So here's the end of the first triad. I mean, we're still down at the low end. This is still at the easy stuff. And the magicians are out of the game. Now, this public admission that the plagues are issuing from a power that is higher than anything else, that is unwanted news. That's not approved. But Pharaoh refuses to change course. He's stubborn. He's definite. He's unrepentant. He's unrelenting. He is just immovable. Well, he's not quite immovable. We'll see. But at the moment, he appears to be just utterly immovable. All Egypt is suffering in the future is a pretty big unknown at this point. And the magicians don't seem very interested in pushing this contest to any kind of final showdown. Again, we're kind of at the low end here, and they're already outmatched, just totally out of their league, and that's become very obvious. The admission that this is the finger of God is their way, I believe, of, of telling Pharaoh, uh, reconsider what you're doing, because everything is collapsing around your ears. But that does not happen. And now God will escalate again. See you tomorrow morning.